What's up guys and welcome to the beautiful island of Langkawi. We've got a ton of really awesome things to see and do today, but there is one really big thing that we're gonna save till the end of the video because we're gonna give you some more information about it. But in any case, we now start this day off the way the locals do here in Langkawi, so let's jump back in time to show you what we did this morning. We've headed out to the countryside and we're at a place called Nasi Dagang Pak Malau. I'm sorry if I said that wrong, but I'm trying folks, I'm trying. It's right on the edge of rice fields and is one of the most beloved local restaurants here on the island. It opens around 8 a.m., which is honestly one of the earliest times we've seen a restaurant open here, and it draws a pretty big crowd on most days. We've made the move to get here a little bit early and as you can see, there are still a ton of cars in the parking lot, so we're not here early enough. It opened at 8 a.m. and it's about, let's look at the exact time. 8.20 right now. Luckily, it's a pretty big restaurant, so I don't think we'll have too much trouble getting a table. Thank you very yeah, much. Can we pay at the end, or? No problem, don't worry about oh. payment. Most important is you enjoy and your food. Amazing, <laughs> thank you so much. So right here, we've got all of the rice dishes prepared, and then right here is beef, and then in the middle is chicken, and then the far end is fish, and then you can add on a drumstick, a chicken, piece of chicken, and that's what I did because it looks delicious, and he said it's a little bit spicy, and I can't wait. It does, doesn't it? I'll brave the morning without coffee to eat this meal for <laughs> Oh man. Oh my gosh. No. It's just so savory and like soupy. It's not something you'd normally get think of as a traditional breakfast. There is no dish. eggs. Yeah. There's no bacon anywhere. There's not this isn't a traditional like US breakfast, but this is something I am okay with eating in the morning. This is amazing. Oh, please don't be too hot. Please don't be too hot. It's not spicy at all. It's really good. I haven't had fried chicken in forever. We don't want to become that couple, that those travelers that say, oh, everything's delicious, but this is really, really good. I, mean, I don't really have anything negative to say. I'm just so impressed. I hate that we've waited the last few days to come here because I wish we could have come here again. This is. It's delicious. It's a must stop. If you're in Linkawa, you gotta come here. Any drinks? No. Um, no, no drinks. Why? We had a water bottle. We, we always water. carry a water bottle with us. Got it, got it, got it. Could you pour only? Okay. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you're you. most welcome. Thank you so much. Please do come back for more. Oh, yes, we will. oh yes. Thank you so much. Take care of us. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, now that we've got some food in our bellies, it's time for us to go spend some time exploring the largest town on Langkawi. Alright, time to explore Kua, and usually we started our vlogs off with a cup of coffee, but today we started out with a delicious breakfast, but I still need a cup of coffee. The good news is that there is a great cafe here that's really highly rated, so we're gonna go grab one now. Rock and roll. Thank you so much. What do you think? It's the top rated coffee shop on the entire island, according it. to the internet. I believe it. This is delicious. And it's open before 11, so you really can't yeah. beat that. <laughs> Everything in Chenang <laughs> opens after like 10 or 11. So we said that Kua was the largest town in Langkawi, and that's true, but doesn't really mean it's very big at all. But if you arrive via ferry, then odds are you're going to arrive here. And what's cool about this place is it's got a few things that greet you when you arrive. One thing that we're coming over here to check out is Dataran Lang or Eagle Square. The square is named after the large eagle statue that stands in the center at about 12 meters tall. It's pretty much unmissable. Another unmissable landmark here in Kua is the Maha Tower. This tower is 138 meters high and has a sky lounge on the 18th floor as well as a sky deck for views of the bay on level 33. We're honestly gonna hold off on going up to the top today because the price for international visitors is double the price for Malaysians or locals. It's a little too expensive for my taste, so we're just gonna admire from here, but check it out if you're ever in Langkawi. Hannah, what do you think about Maha Tower? Honestly, the structure itself is beautiful, like just to admire from the outside, and I'm sure it provides really beautiful views of the bay, but I mean, it's hard to mess up these views, if you know what I mean. Yeah. All 
right, I think we've explored a lot of the city here in Kua, so now we're gonna go out to the east side of the island and experience some of the nature here in Langkawi. We sorted. We made it. Let's do it. All right, guys, it's time to go on a little bit of a nature walk, or at least I hope so. I think that's what this is. I'm not totally sure. This place is absolutely massive, and honestly, I think that I'm more excited to see the beauty and all the nature, but I think if Trey has it his way, we're gonna be seeing more than a bunch of plants and butterflies through this park. We're at the Kilim Geoforest Park. It's on the eastern side of the island, and it's one of the most beautiful places that you can visit in all of Langkawi. It's 100 square kilometers of protected wildlife area and natural habitat. For a lot of the different animals over here, you'll find water monitors, you'll find eagles, pythons, vipers, monkeys in here in certain parts. There's bats in the bat cave. So you can find a lot of really cool animals in this particular geopark, but it's 250 ringgit each to uh, take a boat ride uh, for an hour. It's a little bit steep for me. And I don't know that we have the time because we got a lot of stuff jam packed into today. So I think we're just gonna walk over here through the forest and show you around the forest. Now that we're here walking through the park, it kind of makes sense that you can only tour this place by boat. I think that it's a part of the UNESCO Protection, UNESCO World Heritage Site organization for being a geopark. So it makes sense that they don't want you like walking through all of the different various animal habitats that they have throughout here. But this is a nice little walking path and the, the bugs are really loud. Wow. Can you hear that? I gotta be honest, this is the thing that I was most excited about of everything that we're doing today and it's because I absolutely love these walks. I love trying to spot like wildlife snakes and monkeys and I don't think I'm gonna see any because I can just look around and see that there's not any here at the moment, at least within visible eye shot. If you come to Langkawi, you might as well do one of the tours. They've got eagle feeding, they've got the bat cave, they've got alligator cave, they've got some beach excursions. So you can see a lot of things in this geo park if you've got some time and you've got the ringgit to pay for it. We have neither, so we will <laughs> stick to walking through here. Now look, no trip to Langkawi is complete until you have spent time at a beach. That's just what you do here. And to be honest with you, there are plenty to choose from. For instance, we are staying over at Chenang Beach, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not totally my favorite. That's because it's super touristy. If you're a tourist and you're visiting Langkawi, odds are you're gonna stay over there. And if parasailing and jet skis are your thing, then that's gonna be the spot for you. However, Hannah and I like a more chilled, laid back beach and this beat should be a little bit more like that. I'm seeing some great souvenir shops, some sand utensils in case we want to build a sand castle, <laughs> and also some great options for food. It really has everything that you can need here for a chill day at the beach. Yeah, we're getting lunch here for sure. Oh yeah. I panicked and changed my order. Honestly, the stuff on the menu was all in like some English, some Malay, so I got egg fried rice because I couldn't really see what everything else was. And she came up and I was like, I have not decided. <laughs> There's a coconut shake that I saw when we walked in and like the shakes here have just been so good. So I got one of those too. So the shake is perfect. There's gotta be ice cream. It Why don't smells you just like- try it? It tastes like cake batter, and it smells like cake batter. This is about to be dessert first, if you know what I mean. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Yes. yes, thank you. So we each got some fried rice, and then we're splitting this little beef platter, but we knew that it came with a lot of vegetables. So Hannah wanted the vegetables, I wanted the beef. It just kind of worked out that way. And we're kind of like messing with the sauce, but it's incredible. The fried rice is spicy, so this is like really soy saucy, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's not so yeah. spicy. So the fact that the rice has the spice is like so good. It's nice. It's so good. It's very nice. The rice has a spice. It's right. nice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> We 
we're going to hang out for a couple hours here, but honestly, the weather is not really great. It's right at the edge of rainy season, so it's been pouring down rain every night, and it looks pretty cloudy over the entire island. But one thing that's beautiful after a good rain is a waterfall, so let's go check out the largest waterfall on the entire island of Langkawi. So one of the best ways to get around Langkawi is to rent a motorbike. You can rent a car, uh, but we opted to rent a motorbike because it was a lot cheaper and it's a lot easier to drive around the island for us. This is our first time ever renting a motorbike, so it's been a little bit of a learning curve. Speaking of curves. Oh, you like the way I did that. One of the best things about us learning for the first time how to ride a motorbike here is there are probably 10 motorbikes and vehicles on the road at one time. There is, there's not a ton of traffic compared to Hanoi or Krabi or Kosamui. any of the other, Kosamui, any of the other places that we've seen motorbikes. This has been the easiest intro to ride a motorbike. Well, bad news. The waterfall that we drove to is not open, I guess. I'm just letting my butt recover at this point. <laughs> so this has not been uh, the smoothest exploring day, but that's okay. I would fly the drone here, but the guy at the last place told me to be very careful of the eagles. The island of Delangkawi is named after the reddish brown eagle. I believe it translates to the island of the reddish brown eagle. So. They're very present on this island and they are known for attacking drones. I'm gonna hold off and I guess we're gonna flash forward to later. I guess that's what's next. See you then. All right, welcome to Chenang. Now, if you come to Langkawi, then 99% of the time you are going to come to Chenang. It's the most popular place for tourists and locals and just about everybody that comes to the island. A lot of times they just come to Chenang. You've got everything over here. You've got parasailing, you've got jet skis, you've got all the craziness your vacation heart could ever desire. This is without question the tourist hub and the most popular beach on the island. Chenang isn't particularly big, but it's got a lot over here and it's extremely walkable too. Everything that you need is down one beach front road that runs the length of the town. We're currently on the north part of Chenang Beach and down that way you'll find a lot of restaurants, resorts, and then down that way you'll find a whole lot of nothing but the airport. And speaking of airports, if you come to Langkawi, that's probably how you're going to arrive. There are many flights every day from Kuala Lumpur, Penang, I think there's even some direct to and from Singapore, so you have a variety of flights to choose from. As we kind of said earlier, this place is a little bit touristy. There's a lot you can do from jet skis to parasailing to the crazy thing that we saw flying through the sky. But we have found one place on this beach that kind of fits our vibe. We like a little bit more chill, a little bit more relaxed kind of vibe. And we found one place that does fit that bill. Let's go check it out. Grab a beer here, enjoy the sunset, enjoy the, the music because it's vibey, and then we'll head over to Bobby's for dinner. Alright, guys, time to go to our favorite restaurant on the entire island of Langkawi. We've been here probably at least once a day for the entire week that we've been here so far and the staff can attest to it because they've seen our faces at least in the morning, in the evening, or at night for dinner. I love this place. This place is awesome. They're so like nice and they're so welcoming and they've customized Trey's order every single time without <laughs> vegetables so you really can't go wrong. I swear I feel like I get attacked in some of these because <laughs> Hannah's like oh yeah Trey wants it customized without vegetables. All I see is no onions and all of a sudden it's like I'm rejecting the garden. I'm gonna eat the peppers in it. I'm gonna eat the garlic in it. Is garlic a, pe a vegetable? If you know if a garlic is a vegetable, get down in the comments and let us know. I'm pretty sure it's a vegetable though. So we teased at the start that there was one thing that's one of the best things to do here in Langkawi that we weren't doing. That is the Langkawi Sky Cab and the Langkawi Sky Bridge. The reason we didn't do that is, as you've seen, the weather's not been great. We are right on the edge of wet season and we have clouds everywhere, there's cloud coverage everywhere, and honestly, we didn't want to pay the amount of money that it costs to go all the way to the top just to be covered in clouds. We didn't do that, but if you come to Langkawi, that's a must-do thing to do here. It's the steepest gondola in the world, and the only reason why we're not doing that, obviously, is because it's just expensive and clouds and has nothing to do with my fear of heights. Oh, man. I love this place so much. 
Hannah, have you been able to monitor monitor uh, your steps or? <laughs> <laughs>